Welcome to Compression, the quest to $100 million in just one year. Join me, your host, Logan Freeman, in this one-of-a-kind interactive podcast experience where I am on a quest to compress three years of achievement and production into 12 months. And no, the answer is not to just work harder. I'm bringing you not only ideas and concepts that are complete at the theoretical level, but they're also effective at the applied level. Look guys, knowledge is not power. It is potential power. Knowledge plus massive strategic action equals power. We're talking about strategy, systems, accountability, all in real time. This is Compression. Welcome back to an upgraded version of the Compression Podcast. We've been on this journey of getting this video right. And I love this new challenge that both of us have been going through. But, you know, you'd think it'd be so easy. Let me go get this $800 camera, this $200 lens, all the cords, the batteries. I'm just going to plug it in. It's going to work. And I'm going to look awesome. It's not the way it goes, people. Is not the way it goes for anything in life. And so I'm making the parallels here that whatever is worth your time, your effort, your energy, it's not going to be easy. Just like getting this new video system up, I'm just trying to get 1% better. Okay, I got the cords. I plug it in. I start messing with all the features. I got all these different things, different setups, different lights. I've tried 50 different configurations. I've gotten frustrated at every single point. But guess what? Every day... I'm just taking a little bit of a step forward and putting it out there on LinkedIn, getting a bunch of free feedback that probably would take 50 hours for somebody to figure out. I got figured out in in one or two hours. And if you go back and look at the first post I did and look at the second video, it looks way, way better. So I'm testing some new things out. I'm doing some, some cool things with video. I'm excited about that. But it's just a parallel that if something's worth a lot to you, to other people. It's not always easy to get there, guys. It's, there's no plug and play system. All right. You got to iterate. You got to try. You got to take action. And that's what we're talking about this week. This week's episode is going to be called Inflection Point. Inflection Point. I had to study Ooh. what an inflection point actually was in mathematical terms. The intention, what you guys are going to get out of this episode defining the outcome. When you can't get something out of your head, WTF, what do you do? When you can't get something out of your head, you're going to learn today by the end of this call, how do you deal with that? How do you get it out of your head? How do you let it not hold you back? How do you let it not get you sick, get you down, make bad decisions? How do you not let it lead to major panic attacks? And I'm going to tell everybody, Right now, on this episode, I think I had my first panic attack this week. And we're going to get to the bottom of why on this call. So, I uh, appreciate everybody joining. If you're not listening, or sorry, if you're just listening and you're, you're not going and, and watching the videos, hopefully you'll catch a snippet and hopefully this video looks way better than it has in the past. We're trying to elevate people. We're trying to take it to the next step. So, Jerome, I just lot, you know, dropped a lot there. Where do you want to start at today, man? Where do you want to dive into? First, I want to talk about the video, man. Video's looking outstanding. I see you got extra lighting going on on the bookshelf. It, nope. That depth, it's called depth. Putting that depth in there is just <laughs> next level expertise and i i talked about anthony vecino he recently did something similar to that so i don't know if he dropped comments on your your post or not i didn't I go back him. in after i call but it. that that's uh that I, I i see it i see it showing up in multiple places that's clutch and we're, we're going to get to the bottom of this and we're going to get you back on on flight we're, we're going to get back up in the clouds man we're going back in the sky let's do it man all right so one thing i track you know your internal state usually is manifested externally if you're aware enough of it. And, you know, everybody always asks, why do I track so many different things? Why are you tracking your heart rate? Why are you tracking your steps? Because you can't measure it. You can't manage it. And so, 
you know, I felt my heart the last two, three, four weeks really starting to, to uptick. And then I saw it on my, on my tracker, but it's been really getting up high just all day, average above 85. And that's just not normal. I mean, three, four weeks ago, I was at 70, 65, 70 on average. That's where I want to be. And so I, you know, I started taking stock of that and I started to feel kind of, uh, you know, some external manifestations of some internal kind of beings. And so, you know, a big piece of, of what I'm trying to do is give people a model that they can, they can then go implement. And, you know, if you're modeling me, if you're tracking your heart rate, your steps, your water intake, then you can go back and you can fix a problem or you can look back in time. You can see a snapshot. You can compare it. And so what I've been doing this week is comparing you know, a lot of different KPIs or key performance indicators that I track. You know, last couple of weeks, we've been talking about sustainability a lot, you know, trying to focus on sustainability. And, you know, this week I had to implement what, we, what Tony Robbins calls a triad. You know, if you want to move from one state to the other, to the next state, a better state, a higher state, you got to change one of three things. It's your focus, your language, and your physiology. Okay. And so I think we'll probably just go ahead and start because you guys are going to, if I start with the wins, you guys are going to be like, what the hell is he talking about, man? Like over here saying he's stressed out, having panic attacks, but we're going to start with the inflection point that happened. So I'm sitting here on Wednesday, had a big webinar, over 90 people signed up. Half of them showed up in the middle of the day. These are people that I have cultivated relationships with, hot investors. You know, just to have 90 people show up to a webinar for a, for a deal is a, a big accomplishment. But I get off the webinar and I'll talk about the I'll talk about the end result of the webinar here soon. But get off this Ooh, that's webinar. That's a win. That's a win, by the way, in case you got spoiler alert, guys. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a big win. I'm sitting here and, and I'm like, okay, something just happened that's never happened before. It's very good. I got some really awesome things going on. I'm going to try to enjoy this, you know, like, you know, Jerome's always talking about, all right, man, you got to, you okay. got to enjoy those wins, celebrate those victories. I'm like, I'm a rebel in this a little bit. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. What? I, I did not allow myself to feel any type of positivity. It was like, all right, cool. Next thing. What do I got to fix? What am I getting into? What do I, what's still outstanding? What do I, what do I got to do now? And I'm sitting here watching myself sitting in right here in this seat, hearing myself go through all of these different things. And my heart starts beating and, and, and I had to jump right from my webinar to a call, a, a long video recording that frankly was just a waste of my time. It was, and it pissed me off so bad. It was hot in my house. The sun was coming in. I was sweating. I had the lights on. I'm starting to get all, I'm like, get off this call, man. Come on, man. I'm going to try, I'm trying to celebrate right now. I'm here talking to this person who's telling me all about their personal lives and, and we're supposed to be recording something. What are you wasting my time for? And my, my levels are just Woo, they starting to rise, man. <laughs> and so I get off that call. It's hot outside. Somebody's coming over to the house to hang some pictures or something. He comes here. I'm trying to cool down, I'm trying to lay down. And I just, I had this panic attack, man. And all, all these feelings, and it wasn't necessarily negative stress, but it was just amount of stress from, from all this change that's going on in the business, from all the positivity that just happened, and then go right back into wasting an hour and a half of my time. I was just like, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to handle all of that. And it finally came to a head. I said, well, it took me some time. I called you. I missed you. Then you called me back and you, you, we missed each other. So I, I, I just started to, uh, you know, I started to call some people. I, I finally had a, I, I never caught anybody, but I, I, I had some time to just kind of come down off of that cliff a little bit. Positive or negative, Cliff. And I sat down with Taylor that night. She's like, 
you know, and I told her about the success that we had. And she said, you know, yeah, it sounds like you had a great day. So I had one of the worst days this year. And she looked at me, she was like, what? And for two hours, we sat there and we talked and I opened up and I realized a light, a new light bulb moment came up is I, I try to own everything. I try to control all of my feelings. She never yeah. even knew anything was wrong with me, but inside my heart was beaten up. I was, I, and I, and it's because I can self-manage very well. But I realized I got to get to talking more. I got to get to sharing more. I got to get to releasing more. I got to get to doing all of these things on a regular basis because I'm focused on sustainability. And the social proof of me here talking about this the last couple of weeks gave me the awareness in the moment to know what to focus on, but it was still a struggle. It was still a challenge, just like getting this camera going. You know, I know what I need to do, but it's still a challenge. And, and so I'm sitting there, man, and, and I, and I finally, I, I got to talking to Taylor and, and, you know, we really started to, to dive in deep to, to how I'm doing and how I'm, how I'm processing things. And I realized that my perception of reality is so skewed. And what I mean by that <laughs> is that I think sometimes some things are the way they are. That's, that's you know, what it is. And that's hard and fast. And when you do that and you get inside your own head and you don't allow other perspectives to be in there, you can do a downward spiral really, really quickly. And again, I manage this well, but I'm, I'm just talking about the, the realizations that kind of happen. And, and this all stemmed from having a great day, having a, you know, being mad at right afterwards, and then some stuff that I'm dealing with in the business, some change that I'm going to be going through, some all of, all of these things. And, you know, so I, I sat down and said, I had that call or, or sorry, I had the, the talk with Taylor that helped me feel really good about things. And the next morning at, you know, 3.30, I get up, go through my morning routine and I take action. The only way I know how to dissipate fear, which is false emotions appearing real, is to step back into them. And so I do fear setting, which we've talked about. And then I take action. So I start reaching out to the people that I know I need to talk to about these certain issues. And I realize all of the panic, all of the anxiety, all of the stress, it was manifested in my own big, thick skull. It wasn't even there. And so at the end of the day, this was an inflection point for me this year because I'm so glad that something like this happened early on in the year that allowed me to, to be able to cope with certain circumstances like this in the future. And I'm not talking about like a challenge that you can just get over. I'm talking about limiting beliefs that have been eating at me for weeks that finally manifested themselves and I finally dealt with them. Guess what? Last two days, heart rates dropped 15 beats per second on average. I mean, come on, man. How can I not let myself get to that point faster? And I'm, I'm here to tell you guys, if you focus on the triad, change your physiology, get up and move, change what you're focusing on and change the language that you're using, you can change the way that you're feeling. So I know that was a lot. We're going to pause there. We're going to yeah. dive into it a little bit, but man, oh man, it was, uh, it was a feeling that, uh, you know, I haven't felt in a long time. So, anyways, where are we going from here, man? You want to put? You ready to put on your scuba mask? We're, we're I'm ready to, to dive deep. in. We're we're going to go deep here. Okay. So one of the things you said that I want to circle back to: knowing and doing are different. Yes. Right. I think a lot of people know things on the conceptual level. Hey, this. Hey, that. But then, if you actually take the time to reflect on your actions, you will know that you aren't actually doing what you think mm -hmm. you should be doing or you know that you should be doing. Knowing and doing are different. Yes. Must emphasize that point. And so most people aren't honest enough with themselves to actually point out the difference. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I know I'm supposed to do that. And then they sit there and keep doing the thing. For instance, exercise. I know I'm supposed to exercise and they just sit there and not exercise, eat fried food. I just finished eating a cookie from Chick-fil-A. They're my favorite. 
And yep. I know I shouldn't eat it, but it's phenomenal, right? When I'm thinking about your heartbeat, and I hope it didn't drop 15 beats per second. I hope it's 15 beats per minute. That is. But, minute. Yep. I, after yeah. I said it, I was like, no, I said that wrong. Yeah. I really want it to be. So let's first go there. Are you still doing, you, you slowed down because of COVID, right? Are you back on your routine from an exercise and movement standpoint? Absolutely. Three, three a week, Monday with Parker, Wednesday by myself, and the weekend by myself. God, I've been, I've been knocking them out. So you back to that. I haven't missed so them. that isn't that isn't the issue. The next, are you eating what you're supposed to be eating? Eating great. Yep. I'm actually doing water. a lot of fasting and, and eating better than I have been. And the water is there. You're drinking water like you were. Okay. And so that's how you be guys. This is super important. That's how you know, hey, he didn't do it by what he was consuming. Yep. This was actually environment induced this is you know when you look at the top and the bottom number on your blood pressure that bottom number is really more of an indicator of your like overall health and then the top number is an indicator of the stress that you're because it can be pretty variable so you, you're dealing with all of these things and in the end you said they were all manufactured i like to go to the book the four agreements and i think a lot of the stuff that shows up is when we take things personal right and when we make assumptions, and usually when you have stuff that's in your head, you did one of those two things, right? And is that true in this case? Because we didn't get into the specifics of what it was, but do you think that is applicable? 100%. Okay. 100%. And so the way that Apex performers typically deal with that is they just go and grab the ball and say, I'm going to do it because I either can't count on you because you let me down or I don't trust you with it. Yep. And there's other reasons why you don't trust a person with it, right? Instead of doing that, I think that you ended up pausing and we haven't gotten into all the details of it and we'll talk about it kind of off script, but you found a place to be vulnerable, right? So you went and you talked to your partner, right? And this is a great indication of your relationship. Most Apex performers aren't able to take their armor off at home. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like they have the support system they need. And so when they go and turn and they look somewhere else, they're scared that if they take their armor off, then the person that they share a home with won't be able to tell or won't see them as the superhero anymore, right? You, right? you want to be a superhero husband, right? And dad. So if you take your armor off and they see the chinks, the flaws in your armor, or they see the, that you're not, you know, invincible and you don't have struggles and you don't have challenges, then that facade, but that is ego. Yes. Right. And so when you put the ego to the side and you can actually have a vulnerable conversation, what it ends up doing, if your partner is supportive and loving and what I think most people would describe as a healthy relationship is it brings you closer mm -hmm. because you know that that person's watching your back. And so it's my hope that leaving that conversation, you felt closer to Taylor. And I think you would have in this instance made her feel special because you let her in. Absolutely. And for all the men out there that is wearing the mask of I'm, I'm, I'm invincible, I'm 10 feet tall and, and bulletproof. The way I disarmed my conversation with Taylor, because in the past, when I have unsheathed the armor, there has been panic there. I said, sweetheart, I am fine. We are okay. I need you to hear me right now. I do not need a solution. And I just knocked that. And she looked at me and I just saw the whole, all of her fear from what I was about to say, just dissipate. I said, I'm great. I'm working through this. I just need to be heard. And mm -hmm. when I did that, it gave her the comfort to say, and, and a lens to say, I don't need to fix what he's about to tell me. He just needs me right now. And you have to be humble enough to do that. But if your objection is, well, my wife, she's going to try to fix it. Most women aren't like that. My Taylor is a little different in that regard, but there are some 
women that are that type. And so you can disarm that really quickly. And, th and then we, we took two steps on the level of trust, boom, boom. And we started there. We didn't have to spend 30 minutes trying to get there. It's that easy, yeah. but you got to be willing to do that up front. And one thing that I learned the hard way, because I messed it up so much, because in general, I'm a fixer, was when somebody that you love is coming to share with you, sometimes they just want to vent. Yeah. And if they just want to vent, then let them vent. And then if you have a solution or alternative or something else to offer to them, ask permission to share that. Mm -hmm. But if you can just be the listening ear, sometimes that is more than enough for them. And you can ask them before they even start sharing, hey, do you just want me to listen or do you want me to participate in the problem solving? Because as men, most men are fixers, right? They, yeah. especially apex performers. Oh, well, I'm just going to take care of it for you. I'm just going to go ahead and knock it out. But maybe they want to do it on their own time and, and they want to do it their own way. And they just really want you to understand what's going on. And yeah. this is, I think, valuable. I, didn't, I can't remember if it was three, four, even five weeks ago when we were talking about, hey, you were so locked in, you were so focused and she didn't feel involved and special and mm -hmm. all of, appreciated all of that stuff. And so by coming to her and opening the door and saying, hey, here's what I'm dealing with. Then if you were detached because you were off trying to figure out the thing, she knew where you were. That's exactly right. right. She didn't think something was wrong. And that right there I, is the magic. Yes. That that makes everything OK in the household. And I mean, I suspect she probably checked in. Hey, did you figure it out? Were you still thinking about it? Is it over? Or you even just came out and offered that to her. And when you're playing in that space, you guys can take over. You can take over the world. That's right. You take over the world. And I don't think a lot of men are willing to say that your home life, your personal life has an impact on your professional. You say, hey, I'm I'm able to just bucket this and bucket that and and not no, blur the lines. No, you're not. No. Unless you have a mental disorder that allows you to dissociate from certain things, that is not happening. So. Or, or you don't care about that person. That's right. Like legitimately, you, you, you don't care about that person if you can just discount it and disassociate. So call to action for all the men and women that might be in the, the flip side you know, scenario. You have to be willing to let somebody else in. And you have to disarm from multiple layers before you can get there. And I think so many marriages, so many relationships, not just marriages, fail because of that one reason. So just because you're a male does not mean you cannot be in tune with what's going on internally. And if you do get to that point, you will rise to the next level of achievement. What's holding you back is you not being able to see what's holding you back. So every single day that I'm living right now, I feel like I'm getting wiser because of the self-awareness that I spend on myself, but also because I'm willing to adopt new perspectives. We've talked about this. The O for being a compressor is being open to everything and attached to nothing. That's the key differentiator between a cleaner and a compressor. A cleaner comes home and they're not turning it off. Nope. Kobe finally nope. got to that, that level, maybe, you know, after he stopped playing basketball, but he was in the office at 5 a.m., 4 a.m., sitting in the dark. Lewis Howes went to that interview and he de details it on the School of Greatness in an incredible yeah. way. It's like, hey, who's that in that office over there with the lights off staring up at the ceiling? That was Kobe. So who knows if he actually did or if he just said, I know this is a part of me. And I'm trying to get better at it. We will never know, unfortunately. But I, I, like to, I like to think that he was working towards the compressor level. So that's where we're headed, man. That is where we are headed. So that's the inflection point. Now, we touched on and we, we kind of teased the fact that there was some, some positivity that, that happened. You know, I mean, frankly... In the commercial real estate space, everybody wants to get to the level 
that they have a deal, they have a webinar, and it's funded by the end of the webinar or overfunded or whatever. And, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday, one of my buddies who just started his own company. And we were talking about this. And I say, hey, man, I, I want you to know that there's people playing the game at a higher level. But once you start actually playing the game at that same level, you have to realize that you can do exactly what they're doing. And that's a hard distinction to make. And today, or sorry, this week, I felt that, I found that. The fact of the matter was, is what I saw other people doing out in the space, I modeled, I figured out, and I implemented, and boom, we raised a million dollars in 30 minutes on a webinar. 300 we had this conversation. We, we, we had this conversation. We, we had this conversation before you went down this path now. Absolutely. And I think the, I think the inflection point from that was it can be done. It will be done. It is being done. You are able to do the same things you're seeing other people. And just that realization was crucial. So we had, a, we had a deal. We put it out. We invited our folks. We came on. Before people even saw the offering memorandum, the pro forma, we even had a webinar. I had half the, more than half of the equity raise. I sent you that text. We'll get on the webinar. I have a bunch of people present. Send the recording out have 15 other people trying to get into the deal that couldn't make the webinar and legitimately were upset that they had something else come that they couldn't go to the webinar and grab their spot. So being able to raise a million dollars in 30 minutes, and it's not really 30 minutes. That's the end result. It was three weeks of, of positioning it in the right way. It's seven years of communication and, and foundational work. It's three years of you know, doing what I've been doing. But this inflection point of, holy cow, it just happened, happened this week. So that was a huge win, man. And one that we are going to go celebrate in about an hour and a half with the team. Not, not to mention that we closed three or four big deals recently. I landed on the the front page of the, the, the commercial real estate, Kansas City Business Journals. My email's blowing up from people saying, you know, saw your, saw your article. I got quoted three or four times. I'm on CoStar. All of these things are happening. So that's a huge win is starting to get that traction and that momentum on that front. And I think that what threw me for a loop was as we sit here and talk about the system, the habits, the feelings, when you're actually in the moment, Sometimes it's even harder to deal with if, you're, if you've talked about it beforehand, because now you have expectations on yourself that you know you should be feeling a certain way. And so, you know, every level you just get to, you just get a new challenge, a new opportunity to kind of, to move towards. So that was a huge win this week. My sister turned, you know, she had a birthday this week. I won't say how old she is, but she's three years older than me. So, you know, is what it is. I got to. I have a. I have a lifestyle that allows me to take two hours in the middle of the day to go take her out for a happy hour and for a lunch. My little sister needed me this week. We got her flowers delivered. I took her some Gatorades. I was there for her. That was huge. Opening up with Taylor, being being vulnerable enough to do that and have that conversation was huge. All of the perspective shifts was big. I mean, all of these different things were humongous wins. And I know I keep saying this like every week, it's like, you know, huge breakthroughs and all of these things, but, but guys, it's, I'm not lying. Like it, this is what it is. I mean, if you are dedicated to the craft and you have the right things moving, the new realizations are what lead to the new successes. Okay. The new realizations and I'm, I'm pivoting in the moment. I'm so quick, and I'm starting to realize this. I'm so quick in the moment to realize it, to see it, to have the accountability measures, the different touch points in my life, that it, the, 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 the falling down hasn't happened because I, I, I get caught before that, right? And, and so I think that I, I just don't want people to hear 
you know, the successes and the challenge. Obviously, we started with the major challenge. But if you're, if you're willing to put that time in and be self-aware, and I know I've said that like 10 times, but I think that's the, 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 the piece of this whole situation. You can, in real time, make changes that lead to faster successes that, you know, other people see as breakdowns. They can be breakthroughs in disguise. So all of those things, man, were the big wins. We've already talked about, you know, the big loss. We've already worked through that. But I got to just I just have to reiterate the fact that the time that you spend internally on yourself, what you're doing how you're feeling. That's what the apex performers do. Period. Period. And it's I, not as qualitative as people want to make it. Sorry, quantitative as people want to make it. It's very qualitative. But it takes time. And I'm starting to see why I get up at the time that I do create real and lasting success. So anyways, man, that's, that's what I kind of wanted to touch on from the biggest, the biggest win side of things. There were some other things that popped in there, some great things, but I'm very, very happy to say I was able to look at that challenge and Thursday and Friday to say, you know what, dude, you just, you made your week, you know, like, and what I mean by that is I allow myself today and yesterday to say, hey, you got all these other things that you want to be working on. That's fine. But just realize that your most valuable priority for the week in the professional sense not only happened, it happened at a level it's never happened before. And giving myself that permission today and yesterday has been a freeing feeling and has completely dissipated that anxiety of the heart just just going like this and so that's the huge learning from this week man is i've been harping on it on shows on podcasts on this show on blog posts i have to make a mental model around it for some people to understand a little bit better because not everybody's going to listen to us week after week but if you've been following around along guys this is it man this is it this is what it's about doesn't it feel like you're living a dream right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like a dream that it's like a dream that you don't know it, it, when it's going to end a little bit. It, it doesn't end. It just keeps going. That's the beauty of it. And mm-hmm. you're creating it. So yeah. the, the thing that I, I've talked to you a little bit about earlier this week was the change in your headline. Right. And I don't know if you looked at your open rate on your emails, but I have a very high suspicion that that went up. Boop, 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 boop. It, it went up. You made a tactical adjustment with the way that you title your subject line and your emails. And by the time the webinar hit, because after doing that sequence, people were ready. They were ready before you even opened your mouth. Right. And so I just want to come back to that a million dollars in 30 minutes. Yep. And a middle of the day webinar when people are too busy to come to those during the day. Right. Because everybody's working. Well, for everybody who's doing a webinar at seven o'clock in the evening and getting a fraction of their uh, commits made. There's a different model out there. Mm hmm. And if you prime the pump, if you've done the work, and it's the compound effect, it, it didn't just happen in 30 minutes, as Logan mentioned. He's been building a list for a while, cultivating the relationships. But when you have the stars align, anything is possible. Things it that you didn't is. think were, things that you didn't think were, you, you'll, your dreams should be real. And I can't emphasize that enough. And if you're willing to pay the price, price of admission. And I suspect if we pull out your journal from Wednesday morning, it has some the webinar in it. Oh, yeah. Right? And 
I suspect you probably wrote down what happened that day. I do. And I haven't read it. You haven't sent it to me. But I have a sneaky suspicion that you wrote it down. And then it showed up. I wrote it down multiple times. It was there. And it showed up. There it was on the on the wins list. Here it is looking at me in the face. The one thing we didn't touch on that I do want to speak about that allowed me to to get over this panic attack as well is relinquishing control. And, you know, people talk about this a lot, but. And I'm pausing here because I want to make sure I get this right. But the fact of the matter is, is when you look at the bubbles of circle of concern and the circle of control, very little is actually in the circle of control. Right. There's another circle. (laughs) And it's the circle of impact. It's things that you can impact, but you do not have control over them. it's, It's a Venn diagram. And in that middle, you got your circle of, of concern here, your circle of control, there's one in the middle. It's a circle of impact that gets in the middle of both of those. And what happens, 95% of your life is in that circle of impact, honestly. Mm -hmm. And once you realize that and you control the little bit that you can and you make peace with everything else is when you can start to, to feel a certain way. And so this week, I mean, I, I have to say that uh, I had to go back to my definition of success Ooh. from John Wooden, just simply says, success is the self-satisfaction knowing in, in your heart that you did the best that you were capable of doing and surrounding yourself with everybody else that you, you know is also doing that. And that's a big piece of it too, but knowing that a lot of it is in the impact circle and not in the control circle. Cause I'm really good at not staying in the concern circle, but what I'm not very good at is staying out of that impact circle. And I try to push myself into that impact circle a lot, but I watched myself this week and I said, Hey, this is where you're at right now. You got a way to think about this, which is huge, right? You got to have a, a matrix, a model to understand it. You've got yours. I've got mine. People listening to this need to find the one that works for you. Once I could label it, then I could tame it. Once you can name it, then you can tame it. That's you right. got to be able to label that stuff. You got to be under, be able to understand. And once you can, you can move past it. it took me about four or five hours, but I, I moved past it. Some of the things that I did, I talked to people. Okay. I changed my physiology. I changed the language. I zoomed up. I said, okay, watch yourself like a hawk. You focus on that triad and then name the thing. Once I was able to name it, then I could tame it, Jerome. And that was a big, a big realization too. So let me, let me pull out that tool because I don't think everybody's going to catch what you just dropped. And I call this one a diamond. So you said it took me four or five hours to come back down. In the past, I don't know that you would have recognized that there was something elevated. You might have felt it, but you couldn't name it. And right. then have the awareness to say, whoa, danger, come back down. Right? That's the whole meditation, right? I see the thought. I, I, I feel the feeling. And that's okay. We need to let that go. Right? And the last thing I'll say and we didn't actually land this plane, but I think it's one worth landing. In the end, with what you were dealing with, I believe that you just had to trust because you said you had to surrender to the process. So you decided to trust what was going to happen and whatever needed to happen did. Yes. And it wasn't because you made it happen. Mm -mm. It was either the process that was in place, the system, right, was in place, or somebody else exerted their will to make sure that they delivered on a commitment that was made. That's exactly right. 
either one of those is the way that it's supposed to work. And so if you aren't surrounded by people who are the latter, willing to impose their will to affect a result, then you need to change your circle. Yep. And that might not feel good. You might be like, well, they're my friends. But I'm telling you, you'll have a much better life if you surround yourself with the right people. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, this one will be a little bit shorter because I'm going to talk with Jerome off the, off the air. But I think there was a ton of value. We're going to name this bad boy Inflection Point just because – I'm going to hit you guys with some big numbers here in the very near future. So the episodes will, you'll, you'll see if you want to know an update. Uh, I got the pipeline filled to 100 million. I've got the tracking going on, on the 25 for this quarter. But we're going to take a big leap here in March and in, in April. And I don't want people to, to miss out on that. But this is so important. Last week, we talked about friction and, and sandpaper. And my podcast team was like, what the heck are you naming a, an episode called sandpaper for? I said, just, just do it. Just do it. And we're going to call this week's inflection point. It simply means it's when a line basically bottoms out or flattens out and it can go up or it can go down. And there's a little bit of a an opportunity for you to, to figure out which way that goes. So we're going to leave everybody with a quote from the one, the only, the beautiful and incredibly talented Beyonce. <laughs> I know Jerome just, I know Jerome just loves my quotes, <laughs> but Beyonce says, I don't like to gamble, but if there's one thing I'm willing to bet on, it's myself. So go out there and bet on yourself. Jerome, any closing thoughts, my man? If you're doing the work, then betting on yourself isn't a gamble. <laughs> go make it happen. See you guys next week. Hey, compressors, if something you heard struck you, made you feel a little bit uncomfortable, good. Head on over to compressionpodcast.com. And then you can also subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast at. If you feel inclined to, please leave us a review. It's obviously helpful. But instead, I'm going to call you out today. I'm going to call you out and make sure that you do your part sharing this message by sharing it with one person that might need to hear what we talked about today. Be great. Nothing else pays.